uh, not that I know of, but we probably learned the same thing I've already learned. Absolutely. Well, that, that's sad because you really didn't, you didn't demonstrate that you learned anything the last time we saw you. And you really need the program. I mean, you're mad at your family for staying in your one bedroom apartment and you retaliate by sexually assaulting uh, their four year old? Sadly, you heard that correctly. And shockingly, or maybe not, we are watching the parole hearing of this monster who was given just a 10 year sentence, who was given his first opportunity of parole after serving just five, and who of course is considered a low risk score. We'll watch the hearing and I'll unpack it at the end. This hearing is being conducted in consideration of the parole application for Edward Bassett, number 423081. He is serving a total effective sentence of 10 years in jail, followed by 10 years in jail special parole for illegal sexual contact. As of today, records reflect the parole eligibility date of March 30th, 2022. There was no victim input in this case. This is a rehear for discretionary parole as Mr. Bassett was denied parole on November 14, 2022, with a rehear date of May 2024. There is an offender accountability plan for the offender, and it has been reviewed and shows the offender has not completed any program since his last hearing. Utilizing the statewide collaborative offender risk evaluation system, the offender's overall score on the RT falls within the moderate range of risk for recidivism. Utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for sexual offense recidivism falls within the low range. This is your opportunity to express to the board why you believe you should be granted for parole. You may begin. Yes, I have not completed all my classes. I did what I was supposed to do. I basically am just basically now doing just my time. I have talked to the mental health counselor that's in charge of the uh, sex offenders class, and I completed that completely. I have no other idea of what is in store for me to do. Uh, okay. All right. Are you done with your statement, sir? Yes. All right, we're going to ask you some questions. This is a rehear, so you've been here before. You know how it works. We'll start with Mr. Paul. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Bassett. Morning. I have a little bit of an issue with what you just said. Um, you were heard in November of 22. And at that right. point, you were denied, and uh, you were um, with the granting of a privilege, which is re here. Uh, and you were asked to complete the uh, uh, the long term treatment for problem sexual behavior in, in the facility there. And what I have is that you haven't done that, and in fact, you refused to do that. Well, I was told by the counselor here that's in charge of the sex offenders. She said that I didn't have to go to Brooklyn to do that course because of the, it was it the course that I could didn't do was right here and they, I would, wouldn't I wouldn't have any outcome of going there and taking that other course. Yeah. So um, I I. There was a miscommunication there. I'm not sure about that. However, that's we we were given a totally different uh, story on that. Um, you have a prior uh, illegal sexual contact uh, in your um, in your criminal history. Uh, in a majority opinion, last time uh, you were granted a rehear in order for you to get further treatment. And uh, nothing's happened since November 22. 
um, except for you getting a refusing housing ticket in uh, June of 23. Um, so basically where we are here is in the same place we were in November of 22. Um, and, and so with you not taking that long, longer term uh, program, I don't, I don't have any, anything to ask you. And I, I mean, I don't have anything else to do here except the same thing that the last panel did. Um, and that is, you know, I, I can't support your parole if you're not going to take the program that you've been asked to take. So, um, Madam Chair, I don't Thank have you. any questions. Thank you, Mr. Paul. What is the name of the counselor who told you that you didn't have to do what the parole board asked you to do at the last hearing? Uh, I don't know her last name, but her first name is Melissa. Melissa at, at what facility? Carl Robinson. Okay, so you're telling me that Melissa at Carl Robinson saw that the parole board wanted you to do the one year track uh, program and she said, no, no, you don't have to do it. Well, she said I didn't have to worry about going to uh, Brooklyn to do it because the class that I was, I wasn't going to be able to. No, that's sure. not true. It was offered to you. It was offered to you and you didn't want to do it. Not that I know of. It was not offered to me. I mean, we have documentation that says that it was. So you were willing to take the program? Yes, I was willing to take the program because I did took the program here at Carl Robinson. No, you but took I the short term I program. I, didn't we, want to, I was on I your didn't. last hearing and you, you had already taken the short. We knew you took the short term program. We wanted you to go back into the long one. That's why we gave you 18 months with a re here. We gave you 18 months to do the program, come back and tell us what you learned. I'm going to learn the same thing I learned here. No. Well, why do you think there's a short term program and a long term program? I have no idea. Well, I mean, could you imagine maybe that it's a little bit different and that you might learn something else? Uh, not that I know of, but we'll probably learn the same thing I've already learned. Absolutely. Well, uh, that's sad because you really didn't you didn't demonstrate that you learned anything the last time we saw you and you really need the program. I mean, you're mad at your family for staying in your one bedroom apartment and you retaliate by sexually assaulting uh, their four year old. You need the help, you need the program, so you should have been even if what you say is true and nobody offered you the program. Even if that's true, you should have been begging for it because you need it and you were asked to do it. And what did you think was going to happen here today? I'd be denied. I know I was going to be denied. I had so, you didn't care. Be denied. so you didn't care if you were denied. And what am I going to do? Uh, take some more programs to better yourself and prepare yourself for release to the community because right. eventually you're going back out to the community and we don't want you to come back here. You want to not stay in another 10 years? I don't give a fuck. Okay, Mr. Rodriguez. I have no questions, Madam Chair. Can't help someone who doesn't want to help himself. Uh, reasons for denial, nature and circumstance, um, inadequate evidence of offensive change. Do you anything else? Inadequate procedure for program. All right. Yeah. That's good enough. No, but I can now see where the insulting language disciplinary report came. Yeah. yeah. In the matter of Edward Bassett, I mean, number 423081, I'll make a motion to deny parole for the following reasons. The nature and circumstance of your current offense, inadequate program participation, and inadequate evidence of offender. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. You have 10 years special parole. I make a motion to set the following special parole conditions. Okay, so let's talk about this. No alcohol by the court. Yeah. No health evaluation treatment being necessary by yep. the court. Sex offender treatment. Yeah. All four. Oh. All four based on court. I know. Well, the court. I, uh, court I mean, I'm specific. They were. Parole. They were. All right. Yeah. Uh, no victim, KQ, and no right. minors. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, in the matter of Edward Bassett, uh, uh, make a motion to set the following special parole conditions. No consumption of alcoholic beverages. 
No contact with your victim, initials K, Q. A mental health evaluation and treatment is deemed necessary. No contact with minors without your parole officer's permission. Problem sexual behavior treatment. A restriction on pornography and enhanced internet and device monitoring. Second. There's a second. All second. Aye. Aye. All right. We wish you the best, sir. You'll get all of this in writing. It's a lot, but the judge had a lot of concerns and gave you a lot of conditions for your 10 years of special parole. So you will get the treatment when you go out into the community. We wish you yep. the best, sir. Yep. This concludes the hearing for Edward Bassett, number 42308. Well, there it is. We just, we saw evil. I think the definition of evil, the definition of a monster. I mean, you heard that right. He claims that he sexually violated a four-year-old because his family members moved into his apartment. Now, you know, what Rich was able to find, you know, it seems that there's no information, detailed information on this crime because it's just a child. No one cares, right? But he has he has a he has a September first uh, arrest for second degree strangulation, first degree unlawful restraint, and that was August twenty seventh, twenty seventeen. You fast forward to just October 30th, 2017, when he is arrested for this charge. So it's possible that he got arrested for that, spent just a month or so in prison, came back out, and the relatives were in his apartment. I'm just speculating. Maybe he told them to leave, you know, the same people that, and then so he molested their child. I mean, that's what he did. You can't make this stuff up. And and then a DA says, oh, you know, you know, a judge, they agree to this 10-year sentence. 10-year sentence, opportunity for parole after five, which he got. He shows up to his parole hearing and the board's like, you know, you need to finish your programs. We didn't watch the hearing, but this is what they went through. You finish the programs and we'll let you out after serving just five years. You just have to finish an 18-month worth of, of, not even 18 months. You just have to finish programs. You'll be back in 18 months. He gets to get out three years early because his maximum release date is March 31st, 2027. And what does he do? He doesn't care. He doesn't give an F. <laughs> he comes back and says, ah, I don't want to take the programs. And then, you know, they say, oh, whew, okay. Well, your soul, you're, you will serve all your time. But I think the insanity of this is, again, you know, monsters exist. Evil exists. It's our responsibility to deal with evil. This is not dealing with evil. This is common sense to anyone. A judge gives a monster a 10-year maximum sentence, but he could have gotten out after five had he just gone through the motions. This parole board would have paroled him had he done the programs and, and, and recited a few memorized lines. So I, I, you know, I just have to harp on the whole system being broken. The, 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 the lazy DAs, the nonchalant judges, even the parole system and everything. You might say, well, in this situation, at least it worked to the best. He, he's getting his maximum of 10 years only because he's, he doesn't give an F. And then when he gets out, he has all of these obligations that maybe hopefully he will, he will fail in. And then he'll get sent back. He'll lose his special parole. He basically is like getting revoked. 
you don't serve the whole 10 years. He'll get another opportunity, you know, maybe just a year into the revocation. We've seen them many, many times. This is how it works. And then maybe he'll be in and out of halfway houses for the next decade. Of course, all in taxpayer dollars. And this pure evil monster is, I think he's in, he's in his mid-60s, 65 years old about. It's uh, plenty enough time to hurt more little children. And it's just madness. It's insanity. It's disturbing. You know, at least, uh, at least Akinini, she handled it well. Even Mike Pohl, who is basically, I mean... You know, he's for the those of you who who might remember, he's the 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 his, his prior career was was a high school history teacher. That's his experience, and he he's really like he basically grants everybody. I mean, everybody, and even he started off by saying, "I I have a a, a bit of an issue with what you just said." I mean, that's him laying down the. Uh, the vi mighty Viking hammer. That was his Hulk smash comment. You know, I think the, the parole board laying down those different regulations, <laughs> like, you, you're going to need to do programs on the outside. Ha. You thought you got the last laugh. Although we have seen, we have seen, what was it? Uh, I remember seeing Mr. O'Shea. There was um, there was someone who was on. He he took a life in a DUI, and he was on work release. And, and Mr. O'Shea said, "You know, I, you really shouldn't be at work release. You should be taking programs AA to better yourself." And the guy said, "No, I don't. I don't want to." And then at the end, Mr. O'Shea laid down the gauntlet at uh, on on mandatory restrictions. He's like, "You're going to be required to wear." A bracelet, you know, a, a a monitoring anklet bracelet. You're gonna have to go to A, and he he gave such a long laundry list of requirements. The guy had no idea that this was coming on to him. I wish I could replay it for you, but it was it was uh, it was epic, more epic than what we just saw here. But from what we just saw, he'll probably just fail miserably. And then he'll be in and out and we'll get to see. But so yeah, he's his full term date is um is gonna be I know I mentioned it already, but uh 2027, and that's only three years. Think about that, Connecticut. Think about that. Uh, if you didn't see it, you probably wouldn't believe it, and that's why we do this. Thank you, Richard, for the info. And with that, I'll let you go.